With me today is Commissioner Paul Mixon. He's running for another term on your Okaloosa County Commission starting in 2024. That election day is August the 20th. It's the Republican primary, but everybody is allowed to vote in that election. So we wanted to have Commissioner Mixon on to talk a little bit about his campaign and his goals for the next four years should he win another term. So, Commissioner Mixon, will you give us a little bit of background about yourself before we get started? Sure. Sure. Thank you for doing this, Christopher. I'm sure the people in Niceville and Valparaiso and the community around Midbay really, uh, really enjoy having this uh, firsthand to be able to look at at home. Hey, I'm Paul Mixon. I was born in Natchez, Mississippi, but moved early in life to Shalimar, Florida. I lived in Shalimar, attended local schools there, uh, graduated from Choctaw in 98, and uh, have, have stayed in the community for the majority of life. Um, my wife and I moved to Crestview, I guess about 17 years ago. We will be married 23 years uh, in two weeks. So we have seven children, six boys, one girl. Life is um, an adventure. It's a fast-paced adventure. Uh, four years ago, I um, chose to step into the race for county commissioner for District 1. I filled the seat that uh, Graham Fountain was vacating. It has been an honor, tremendous honor, serving you for the last three and a half years. We have been able to accomplish so much together. I love that we live in a represented government, and I get the opportunity to represent you. It's elected countywide, and so everybody in the county has the opportunity to vote. As Christopher said, the primary is open because there's no, um, no opponent coming from, uh, from any other party or write-in. And so the, the race will be decided August 20th, and it's my hope. That, uh, that you and I can partner together again, and I can continue to serve you for another four years. So what I think a lot of voters are going to want to know immediately is, what happens if you win this election? What are your goals going to be for the next four-year term? So my goals are going to stay the same. We've been able to, uh, to work diligently to provide a, a wonderful method of transparency in our government. I firmly believe in all of our area. Okaloosa County has a, a great uh, system of government right now. There are areas that need to be improved, and there are improvements that have been made, and it's moving in a great direction with that. But if you look at some of our departments, some of, some of the departments that, that you and I get to see the benefit from, um, our IT department, being able to see that the county owns the fiber, and we're able to take the county fiber throughout the entirety of the county. Uh, the partnership that we're doing with our school system so we can put fiber in schools that don't have fiber. So we can step up um, Baker School and Laurel Hill School and, and see them part of the connectivity for Internet. That is, that is huge in our day. We have areas in Okaloosa County that don't have Internet service to their homes. Um, most of us don't think twice about that because we're so used to it in our house. You used to have to hook up coax cable to be able to turn the television on and get a cable television show. And now... You don't need that. It's not a necessity. You turn on your Internet box and you stream whatever you want to watch or you open your phone and you play it to your television. We take it for granted, but there's still areas that don't have those type of what we would see now as essential items. Um, so to be able to continue in, in transparency, continue supporting our departments that do a great job for us. Our public works department has been tremendous in their ability to pave roads, to bring this this dirt to pave process. Uh, nearing completion, and that's been funded by surtax, which you voted in, and I voted in with you, and surtax has been tremendous for our county because it's almost to $100 million that has been paid into infrastructure, public safety, stormwater, but it didn't come out of our property taxes. It came out of half a penny on the sales that we make, and, and so that has been a great addition. That will be coming up again um, within the midst of this next term. And if the community decides that we need to do that again, uh, which, which I think they will, I think it has played out tremendously well. Uh, one thing that's going to come up, Christopher, in this next term is, is we need a new jail. That's not going to be uh, the, the best topic for some because that's going to be a big spend. And, and some people take on the approach that a, a jail is, well, going to the jail alone is part of the punishment. And the reality is if you look at it within our communities, most families have had some type of interaction with someone that has been inside of our jail. Uh, a fun fact, most people that leave our jail leave with no criminal record. When you say, how in the world could that be true? Well, any, if you're driving 30 miles per hour over the speed limit, you, you've just committed a crime that you could go to our jail for. You know, that starts to make it a little personal when you think that way. 
And, and if you're just speeding, don't call me out like that. You, no, no worries. <laughs> but but if you're just speeding and you go into our jail and you go through the booking process and the intake process, and, and we begin to um, wait either upon first appearance, wait upon a, a bail, wait for you to be able to sign your own ROR, it, it still is an interaction where you are being held within that facility. So say you go through a long uh, trial and you're held there and, and you're found not guilty or, or charges are dropped. You, you still leave with no criminal record. There's just um, uh, there's a persona that we have about jails, and oftentimes we mix those with prisons. And, and the difference is a jail at the county level is where you go and you're held until you're found guilty. And, and you're not typically sentenced to jail, especially for felonies. It goes beyond a year, and so you're sentenced to a state prison. Well, prison, everyone has a record when they leave there. A, a jail is totally separate. And so, so we've got to get out of the mindset of the punishment to the uh, allegation of a crime is the treatment that you receive. So over the last three and a half years, we've been able to do tremendous reform within our jail, w within the staffing of our jail, within the programs of our jail, within the operations as a whole. And it's, it, it's doing fantastic. I'm proud of the staff that we have there, proud of all of the county staff, because the people that work for Okaloosa County are in the trenches every day serving you and me as they serve our county. And so that's exciting to see. We have other county, uh, other departments within the county, public safety. It's, it's growing well. Our response times with EMS are improving and continuing to show an absolute level of professionalism coming from our EMTs and our paramedics that I'm, I'm proud of to see. We know that when we call 911 for an emergency, they're on the way. And when they get there, we're going to get excellently trained staff that do a tremendous job and treat us with respect and, and really a love for people, which is a love for their county and their community. And so um, as we see this, uh, you know about our airports department. Bob Sykes Airport, which is in District 1, is growing tremendously. There's so much industry happening and coming to Bob Sykes Airport. There, there's a restaurant there now in the FBO. That, that's operated by a, a professional staff, and it's, it's just a, a fantastic addition to the northeast portion of what we would call Crestview. It's uh, not inside the city limits, but, but really what you would consider to be Crestview. There's just so much happening, Christopher, around our county. We um, called for a public meeting a couple of years ago with Commissioner Boyles asking to be able to talk about uh, the growth of our county. I wanted to talk about the, the Northwest bypass. I wanted to talk about agricultural lands, and I wanted to talk about really growth. How, how do we do this? And um, that may have been a, a hot topic to bring up, might not have been the best timing within a campaign year, an election year, but it was necessary for our community. Sometimes you have to take the steps and do the things that not everybody finds as popular when they are for the betterment of our county. And so bringing that to the front and seeing that it, it took us almost two years to get that to a, a public item that we could bring forward and have a, a study to see what people want. You know, it, it amazes me, though, Christopher, to have this study. It's the first time we've ever done this as a county. So, so what I mean is we've changed the future land use map before. People call that the flume. And that, that's been looked at before. We've, we've changed codes before. Ordinances have changed. Those happen in public meetings. Yes, everyone is invited. They're publicly noticed, and people have the opportunity to come. But never have we taken the step of saying we need to look at the overall health of how we're growing. We need to look at, at, at transportation mixed in. So we had a transportation study finished. We need to look at... Um, our quality of life. So we did some quality of life um, studies so people could, could have their voice heard. And then you get to growth. And, and instead of having it just at a public meeting, like every other meeting, advertised on whatever page of whatever paper and maybe advertised in social media, but whatever routes are taken by law, we decided let's hire a company and step into a genuine study that's going to genuinely hear from people. And instantly, lies began to come in. We're going to get rid of all horses in the north end of the county. We're going, I mean, it just, I, I have some of the flyers. They were ridiculous. And what they did is they really harmed the morale behind the pure motives of saying, let's let people's voices be heard 
so that we can grow and plan to grow and have that established as a wonderful plan that we're all a part of. And so now we're to the phase within this study where um, the company we've hired, Inspire, has has been doing a thorough job, has been meeting with people, been continuously having town hall meetings, and, and they're putting together an idea to bring back to the commission with their suggestion. You know, that's where we're trying to get, is to where people know that they have a, a voice. Those voices are to be heard. And the best way your voices are heard is the process that we have as Americans to have this wonderful season of uh, campaigning and elections. And so we live in a represented government where we get the opportunity to have someone represent us at every level of government. And the county government is, is probably the um, closest for us to be able to uh, touch and see tangible evidence from and the closest for us to be able to reach out to. Uh, and so uh, daily having constituent conversations, uh, daily we're getting dozens of emails, uh, we're having this opportunity for your voices to be heard so that it really impacts what the future of our county looks like. I can't wait to see the outcome of this study. It, it's unfortunate that folks came with less than fruitfulness to try to take the direction of it, but it is going to be great to see the finished product as we step forward as a county to say, how do we manage the opportunity of growth? Not, oh goodness, come to Okaloosa County, we're, we're, we're dying without you. But we know that more than 70% of our economy is funded by defense-related uh, jobs. We know that we have a wonderful, wonderful population of retired military that choose to come and stay here. We know that we have an element of tourism that happens within Okaloosa County. We did a great thing over the last three and a half years when we expanded the tourism district. What a wonderful task that was for this county because now we're collecting the bed tax throughout the county, which means we're able to utilize those funds throughout the county. In, in the past, um, 18 months or so, we've been able to purchase a few large tracts of land in the north end of the county on a side of the county where we didn't own much land to be able to use for recreational purposes, to be able to conserve that land and let you and me, the residents of Okaloosa County, go there and enjoy walking through the woods, enjoy nature. Um, yes, we have the Eglin Reservation, and I'm grateful for Jackson Garden. I'm grateful for the work that they do, and I'm grateful that we can go and walk on their trails and have fun with that. But when their missions are happening, obviously, we know that that's closed for safety purposes. If we can open county parks, give us the opportunity of having areas where we can go and, and enjoy the Shoal River. I don't know how many of you have ever seen the Shoal River. It's a beautiful river through our county. Well, there's two boat ramps to it. One is right at the base of Highway 85, South Crestview. The other is right at the base of Highway 90, East Crestview. Both of those lie on state-controlled property. And both of those lie in the footprint of those bridges when they are expanded, which means down the road, and we've got to think down the road. If we only think about today, I'll stop there for a minute, Christopher, we'll come back there. But we've got to think down the road because we're planning for what our kids have, what our grandkids have, what our new neighbors that we've never met will have. Um, and it's giving us this opportunity really just to know that that one day that land that we bought as conservation, that land that we bought for a future park is still going to be there. So in the footprint of those bridges, once they are expanded, those boat ramps won't be in existence anymore. So where are they going to be? <coughs> Excuse me. So we, we've purchased some property to be able to, uh, to have uh, spots for future boat ramps. For you to be able to go and walk through a, a 300 or a 400 acre site and enjoy meandering along the riverbank. Something we've never been able to do, but all using tourism dollars that you chose to expand that tourism district. So that was a, a very good thing. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, so I was gonna ask you, uh, as we're talking about the expansion of, uh, of places to live or using the flume, the future land, uh, future land use map, try and say that four times fast. Um, the, uh, my, my question is, is is there an opportunity to where we could preserve some of that land or look to preserve some of that land by increasing density in other places that are uh, essentially under the county's jurisdiction? So 
I would say probably half of the county's population lives in an unincorporated area. So Ocean City, Blue Water Bay, those areas. Uh, is there is there a potential for growth management to uh, rezone some of those areas more densely so that we can put more people in a smaller area and preserve the north end? Or is that something that you guys are, or you yourself are uh, opposed to? Hey, that's a great question, but let me start off with a clarifier first. In one thing you said, a lot of people think that this serves the purpose of allowing the county to come change your zoning. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. It, it changes the future land use map. It makes the availability of the private property owner and their opportunity to change their zoning uh, okay. possible in the future. So, so I do not have the motives of us stepping as a, in as a county and changing anyone's zoning. Um, where I live, that was the, the it was a subject of a, a zoning change where the owner didn't ask for a zoning change. I'm not a fan of that. There are things we can do as a county that bring us about um, really uh, represented government of uh, of public opinion, and you bring in that opinion, and then you you have layers of government that represent well uh, honesty is in integrity, and and it gives us this this opportunity of, of displaying both of those, honesty and integrity, and, and really moving in a way that, that with this study, we can change a future land use map. So if, if you own a, a large tract of land in the north end of the county that, that happens to be either in the city of Crestview or right on the edge of the city of Crestview, and you know that there's a southwest bypass coming there, and oh my goodness, it's going to touch my land, but I want to keep it with pine trees on it. I don't believe anyone in government should be able to step in and say, hey, that land is no longer going to be uh, yours to choose what to do with it. You can keep owning it, but we're going to change the zoning and we're going to force you to develop it. That, that's not the right way for government to operate. Now, some of that land, um, unfortunately, did have to be uh, taken, if you will, for the location of the roadway. But we have a system and a process for that as well to be sure that the owners are compensated with a, a fair market value. And so doing this allows us the opportunity of a couple things. One, to conserve agricultural property. This study at the post of this study will give us the opportunity of buying um, agriculture, we need to buy, buy development rights to land that's deemed agriculture. If it's deemed its future best use is agriculture, and the owner says, hey, I, I want to ensure this is never developed. The county can step in and buy development rights to that property. Isn't that okay. interesting? So uh, who determines future land use? Is that a determination of the entire commission? It is. Okay. It is. And then we submit it to the state, and the state approves and then comes back okay. to the county. Yes. But future land use map is just that future. So it's not going to affect your property taxes. It's not going to affect uh, your current zoning. It's going to affect the, the future. But there are areas in Okaloosa County. I mean, the, the rumor came to me that we were trying to demand the zoning changes for Baker because they were getting a Walmart. Uh, that was the first time I had ever heard that. <laughs> it, it wasn't true. Um, many equestrian statements came that, that weren't true. Many things came out that we were forcing zoning so that we could charge more in taxes because different levels of zoning has different rates within their ad valorem bill. Th that's not true. We're not forcing a change on anyone. We're showing with a study, by the way, that is suggested to be done every seven years. We had one completed in 2000. Okay. That happened as a matter of the board. We had one completed in 2010 that happened as a matter of the board. So in 14 years, we have not done this function. This is the first time ever, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the first time ever we've chosen to, to fight for this function to be a matter of the public, not just the board. So okay. typically the only input the public gets into any type of, of, of future land use change is within the three minute window in public comment time at a board meeting. But this provides them with more than half a dozen different town hall meetings where they can come in and sit down with a consultant. You know, some, some people choose to go to, to a therapist or to doctors or to lawyers or, or to different professions. And, and some say, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to run into that person at Walmart or at mm -hmm. Publix or at Winn-Dixie. I, 
I want to see somebody that's not in the direct neighborhood that I live in. Um, so this this consultant firm, uh, the, the gentleman that's leading it, comes out of Gainesville, works very closely there in Gainesville, and comes over and helps. The only company that bid from the state of Florida is the one that got awarded the um, the contract. And they have the opportunity of sitting down with you and me and our neighbors and saying, what do you think is the future of your community? What a great opportunity where people should be prideful that their voices are being heard and really drafting the narrative of the future of who we are as Oklahoma County. So I want to move uh, this conversation from talking about individuals uh, small holdings, you know, individual land rights to something that's a little bit bigger in terms of the economy. Um, Shoal River Ranch, of course, has been a huge part of y'all's uh, uh, secret sauce in the last four years, you know, bringing people in uh, to occupy that land and derive economic benefit from it. Um, but like you said, still about 70% of our uh, economy is based on the military, and then a huge chunk of the rest of it is based on tourism. Um, so for probably the last 10 years, people have talked about the third leg of a stool. And okay. my curiosity is I'd like to know what is the county see is, or what do you see as the county's role for uh, developing that third leg of that stool to bring in a uh, different industry or different uh, uh, sectors of the national economy here locally to diversify that to keep us protected from a hurricane or some base realignment, some of that stuff? Sure. Uh, well, we've got to take a superior stance within our region in economic development. And, and so in, in doing that, we've got to target um, the business that we desire. So there are a lot of businesses out there. Uh, some of them you, you may not want to see next door. You, you might not want to see nearby you. And, and some you would love to have there. There's been so much speculation about the different uh, entities that are exploring uh, Shoal River Ranch. You know, I've lived here since I was six. And so th those entities, I've heard anything from uh, Disney is coming to Six Flags is coming to, you know, uh, Amazon wanted to come. Amazon chose Santa Rosa County because of the availability of the interstate right mm -hmm. there. You, you have to remember Shoal River Ranch is beautiful and, and it's close to us and it's near to us. And we want everybody to want it as much as we want them to want it. But there's not an exchange there. So if a truck is going to get on the interstate, they either have to drive to Mossy Head or they have to drive to Crestview. And if they drive mm -hmm. to Crestview, they have to sit through our traffic to get onto the interstate. It's That harms us at times. If we could get the commitment of some to be able to, to bring in enough attention for the state to approve an interstate exchange, then that would be a game changer for Shoal River Ranch. And we're working with some companies now to have those type of discussions to see what level the state will become more involved with the idea of an ex of a ramp there. But we have to stay with our feet grounded in reality, too. It is a beautiful site. It is high and dry. The parcels that the county owned are, are the, the top parcels within the ranch. They, they are great, ready to build. We got the uh, Jobs Growth Grant Fund that, that's helping us do some work out there. We got some other grants. We're, we're putting in infrastructure for the, the roadway right there at the entrance. Um, construction is beginning on the first parcel within the next few months, hopefully. Uh, so it, it, it is moving in a great direction, but we can't go and compare uh, apples to oranges and say, why don't we have this yet? Uh, we will. It, it is coming. We need to continue to provide services to them. Another thing the county is doing in the north end is, you know, the state has a huge initiative to get rid of septic tanks. Um, I had a, a senator inform me that their, their hope is within the next 10 years, um, they'll be to where they're barely issuing any septic tank permits. And that's a big deal. It's not that big of a deal in the south end of our county, but when you get to the north end, that is a big deal. Uh, Crestview has some capacity. Okaloosa County has some capacity. But the need is so grand for more sewer capacity that we're going to invest more than $50 million into a site that was bought by water and sewer on the Shoal River Ramp to put in a, a great plant there to be able to, uh, to take wastewater. It's similar to the plant that we have in Fort Walton Beach. Remember years ago, all of the municipalities and Okaloosa County came in together and did one plant for central receiving. What a great idea to see partnerships. And so, so that's coming uh, to the ranch as well. 
it's going to be on the back side, you know, a little further back. It's people live closer to the one in Fort Walton Beach than uh, than you may have businesses to the one in the north end of the county. So it's not a not an issue of uh, uh, of the aroma that you get when you drive sometimes south of the airport. It, it, this is going to be um, a, a great modern, up to date, uh, wonderful facility. And so, but it's a necessity. Nobody likes to think about it. You just like to know that when you um, pull that lever to to flush, that it goes off to never never land. No, no, it, it goes into a process, and, and that process is belabored, and that process is incredibly expensive. And so, um, so that's just another update that's coming out there. But those are those are important issues. If you're going to put businesses there, you you've got to have sewer capability. If you're going to put businesses there, you got to have water, high pressure capability. You've got to have internet. So that's run out there. The county loop is, is going out to touch 393. You've got to have gas. Okaloosa gas has, has run all the way out. I mean, it, it, you have to have these essential functions of utility on the site. And we're getting to a point now where all of those are, um, are there and getting ready. So once the roadway is done, once the first entity goes in, you know, there's an old saying, a crowd draws a crowd. And I think it's going to be the same thing with Shoal River Ranch. As it begins to build out, one, two, three entities come in. I believe you're just going to see a, um, a large pathway of businesses designed to come, and that's what we have to be prepared for. That's what we have to be sure that our infrastructure is ready for. Our roadways, we have some roadway issues. Now, I would say the most common complaint I get is a roadway complaint. And unfortunately, it at many times is an issue of, of education, and, and being able to try to call the right people to come and handle the problem. Um, many people in the south end, specifically Shalimar, Fort Walton Beach area, have had multiple issues with Highway 85 and uh, the shape of Highway 85 lately because the potholes had become so large and overwhelming. And they would call and email daily saying, you've got to do something about that. Don't we pay enough in county taxes for you to go and fix potholes? The problem is that's a state highway. So we can't send a county truck out there to go fix the potholes on the state highway. We have to work through the system within our state. Um, our state DOT secretary for our region is fantastic. He has become a great partner. And Okaloosa County is doing different things with roadways. We're trying to solve the problem in Crestview right now. And we're trying to help push DOT along in such a way that, that we've agreed to come with millions of dollars and partner beside them and say, well, let's, let's fix 85 together. If we bring this much money, will you bring this much money? And then that partnership comes together, and it gives us the opportunity of seeing the project done now versus 20 or 30 years down the road. It's just something that, that transpires when relationships are built. So we can call Secretary Gaynor or Secretary Gaynor's office and say, here's the idea that we have. We can send our public works director over to Chipley. We can sit down and, and chat with them, um, Commissioner Ponder. And Boyles and myself went to DOT headquarters earlier in the year with our priority list and sat down with their decision maker in her conference room to say, this is what we need. You know, out of, out of 19 CIS projects, one is in Northwest Florida. Everything else is central and South Florida. How do we get higher on your priority list? You know, those type of face-to-face -face interactions where not only we can show continuity as a team of county commissioners, willing to work together, but we can go to state and federal government and say, how can we partner with you? This part's your responsibility, but it benefits us directly. How can we partner with you to show you how important it is to us? And those are the actions that are leading us to get things done in Okaloosa County, as opposed to, to some, some neighbors that, that are struggling to get projects across the finish line. Uh, we're able to come with skin in the game and see it to completion. So I saved my the question I care about the most for last. Um, yeah. My my daughter's four now, and um, and you know, <clears throat> twenty years she'll be hopefully you know out of some sort of post secondary education, and uh, might even want to come back and live near her old man. Who knows? Um, That's right. The problem that I see uh, right now is that I don't know how she's going to afford to live here, whether that be in Niceville or Crestview or Fort Walton Beach. There's just not a lot of a affordable housing, but B housing for uh, people in their twenties that are just starting out. 
Um, and I'm, I'm curious, I know you guys have done some work toward that, uh, but I'm curious what your plan is to create a, uh, a wider or a better stocked housing inventory, especially kind of at the bottom end of the inventory. Cause we got plenty of, uh, you know, million dollar homes, but I am worried that there aren't enough apartments or townhomes or starter houses. Right. That's right. And housing is a major issue that we have as a county. But what's interesting is sometimes we get focused that housing is the issue and we forget things, um, you know, the basic allowance for housing um, that comes into the military member. That's fantastic for the military members, but it also helps drive up the the rate of, of rentals within the county. And, and so you'll see a new uh, you'll see a new gauge of a, a rental availability chart when when that changes, the BAH changes, you start to see our apartment complexes change, and our rental management companies begin to change formulas a little bit. I'm not saying it drives the market, I mean, I'm saying it definitely has a lending hand. And then one thing we also forget is um, we go back in our minds to what we used to make uh, monetarily and where minimum wage used to be, and then we say, oh my goodness, rent is so much higher. Um, minimum wage isn't there anymore. I mean, we're we're in the final draws of the minimum wage change to, to pushing over, over 30000 a year. I mean, the exempt employee minimum is changing into the, the mid-40s this year. So, so things are changing. I'm not saying that's enough to go out and rent your own uh, apartment necessarily. But we have to take a, a totality picture of this to say how can we, uh, how can we impact a solution. So we're working with different – we're working with different developers that come to us that have ideas of different parcels that they've purchased. <coughs> We're working with different uh, builders that have bought either apartments or townhomes and plan to go in and, and renovate them. Excuse me, Krista. Mm. Sorry about that. Uh, but we're, we're working with these individuals and businesses to try and help them gear their inventory towards affordability. What we're not doing as a county is stepping in and saying, as a county, we're going to buy more to rent more. Uh, I don't believe the county needs to be in the landlord business. The, the county needs to be in a visionary business and then a pathway business. So if we can be visionaries together to say this is what our future will look like, this is where we are going, and then pathway partners say this is the pathway we need to walk down to get there, what developers can we bring on board that, that see the same vision that can help us achieve that? And where is that essential? Where is that important? Uh, some people have the opinion that all affordable housing should just be in the north end. And then people that work in the south end that live in affordable or attainable housing say, no, that's, that's quite a commute. You know, and It's a, a two-way commute oftentimes. There's got to be a happy median. So we've been discussing this with uh, the military very heavily about some of the orphan parcels. Uh, you have to understand orphan parcels, too. This is not talking about any parcel that has connectivity to Eglin's range. This is orphaned. There's either a major roadway in between, a community in between, um, half of a town in between in some of those stances. There's, there's parcels of land that are still owned by the Air Force that have had community built all around them. And so they don't have an impact to the future of the mission of Eglin Air Force Base and Eglin's Gulf Test Range. And that's what we want to stay away from. That's what we want to protect. That's what we want to see conserved is the Eglin Test Range and the, the reservation as a whole. And, and so, so as we do that, these discussions are continuing to happen. Uh, Monday of this week, Mr. Hofstede, our county administrator, and I were in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Academy to look at a project that's just been – just getting completed where the Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs, so the Air Force, Colorado Springs, the county there, all partnered together with a developer to come in and redo their entrance on the North Gate. And they put in a visitor center, beautiful visitor center, a hotel space with conference spacing, and they did everything thematically to enhance the optics of the Air Force Academy but it filled a need that the Air Force had there. And that's the, the style of partnership that we have to get to in our vision to say this is what our future can look like. And then that's the style of people that we have to surround ourselves 
in our pathway to say this is how we get to that vision. And, and so one way to address affordable housing or attainable housing, more specifically, is, is to be able to continue in these partnerships and, and see some of this land that is orphaned, that's in the middle of, uh, of our communities, be used in such a way that goes to the betterment of our community, which provides attainable housing. Uh, one of the projects that I gave forward that uh, I don't know if it'll be approved or not, but, but one hope is that we can do a community that's, that has uh, deed restrictions, that, that we actually restrict who can live there. And so if you could picture this, uh, military members could buy there, our teachers could buy there, our public servants could buy there, our, our first responders within our public servants. Basically, the ones that fall right now in the category of hometown heroes within the Live Local Act would be able to go and buy a house there. If they could buy a house or a condo or townhouse or whatever the style of construction is, but buy their own. Statistically, we see that people put more pride in when they have ownership. They put pride mm -hmm. in their home. They put pride in their community. That's what we want. People serving, living, and loving Okaloosa County, and they're proud to be where they are. They're not stuck where they are. They're there by choice, and they're proud to be there. And so if we can do that in some of these areas, then we would have to restrict um, the equity growth. So if we could restrict equity growth maybe to 2% a year for the first 20 years of this deed restriction, and then it could open from deed restricted after 20 years. You know, an opportunity where we can control um, really the narrative of fulfilling the purpose. And, and what I mean by that is if someone moves here with a DOD-related job, like your daughter will be in 20 years, and, and she comes back from college, she has her master's degree, and she gets an entry-level job, and she learns how much it doesn't pay right away. <laughs> and she says, Dad, I'm moving in. And you think, oh, I love you. I'll help you move into that new apartment. And, and so your summer child. <laughs> you're working into this role, and, and she goes with her proof of employment, she falls in as a hometown hero, and they say, oh, yes, she qualifies for this and can move in to this neighborhood. She can purchase her own home. She's been saving with that bonus. She has her 20% to put down on her 15-year mortgage. So she's set, and she steps into this community where everybody around her buys homes. They're not rented out. They're owner-occupied. Everybody around her is, is in a near career field and they take pride in where they live, you know, we can start to see how not only are we saying the vision of our community in the future is attainable housing in certain areas, but now we're saying here's the pathway to get to that attainable housing. And this is what we want it to look like in different stages as we go. And we've got to become that intrinsic in our plan so that we don't just say, oh, we need a road right here. But what size will that road be in 20 years? What size does that road need to be in 30 years? We need a housing community right here because it's a need of today. Well, what will that look like down the road? So this growth study that we talked about in the very beginning, Christopher, sorry to circle back to that, but I want you to know, it also gives us the opportunity of creating overlay districts. So we know we're going to have to do a northwest bypass in Crestview at some point. So we, we put it out there, and we had different meetings for the public to come and speak about the path that the road needed to take. I mean, talk about public interaction. And they, they talked about the pathway that the road needed to take, and it went back to the consultants to bring us an educated study based on what they find as a pathway and what they mix in with public opinion of where it ought to be. And then we put out a map saying, here's where the future road is going to be. So this study is giving us an opportunity of saying, yes, we confirm that. That's the route. Let's make an overlay district right there so that if you ever go now and you turn on Old Bethel Road from Highway 90, you will see that there are houses right close to the road. And then you'll open a map and say, wow, one day this would be great to have connectivity to the Southwest bypass. But how do you do that with all the homes there? Well, it's gonna be a terrible process. I mean, there, there's so much land acquisition just in that small corridor. But when you get north of that corridor, it can go into the woods. It can go around many subdivisions, places that people have not built yet. And so you can place overlay districts there uh, saying that 240 feet wide here, 120 feet wide here, 66 feet wide here, these are going to be non-developable for future roadways. And now we're starting to plan for what our future looks like. And then we're starting to get partners involved 
to walk beside each other along the pathway that leads to the vision that came with a plan. So all of these things, someone, someone made a comment not too long ago. Over the last three years, we've paid for way too many studies. No, no, you have to do your homework before you make a plan. And so we've got our homework almost done. And then we can keep moving forward in the idea of how we make a plan. The difference is, and what made people uncomfortable and not used to, is we wanted your opinion. And so getting the opinion of the public so that you and I are a vested interest, we're partners to say, how can we best see Okaloosa County in the future? Then we begin to see what I believe our forefathers meant with this represented government where we have layers of representation in our pathway. Commissioner Paul Mixon is a candidate for his seat that he occupies right now in District 1 for Okaloosa County. His election is on August the 20th. Anybody can vote. Just make sure you're registered. You have about a month to do that. Commissioner Mixon, thank you so much for your time. Hey, Christopher, thank you for having me here. And I hope as we've partnered together in the last three and a half years with the residents of Okaloosa County, I can look forward to joining in a partnership with them again August 20th as they go and, and vote for Paul Mixon. So thank you for your time and thank you for your partnership.